Now it's time for this. The world of work. Now, we were just talking about council in Birmingham. We all know a story about a Jobsworth council official going after someone for no good reason in the community just to prove they're in charge of you. Well, up in Fylde Council in the northwest of England, things have taken a turn for the worse. They're threatening to find a 97-year-old pensioner for feeding the birds in her back garden, all because a nosy neighbour decided to complain about her. Now, the man that runs Fylde Council, Chief Executive Alan Oldfield, who earns nearly £100,000 a year, has given the green light to environmental uh, department officials to threaten retired teacher Anne Sego with a £100 fine. They've even sent vans to patrol the street to see if pigeons are roosting on the roof. It's an absolute disgrace. The council should hang their heads in shame. Anne says she can't even bring herself to watch the birds in her garden anymore because she's so scared of getting a fine for what they call her anti-social behaviour. Meanwhile, the neighbour making the complaints bangs dustbin lids and plays loud music to scare the birds off. Surely this is wokery gone mad. Anne lives near Blackpool. Surely it's time for some illuminated thought. That was The World of Woke. The World of Woke. Now, I'm still with my panel, Elliot Whelan, of course, um, Elliot Keck and Laura Dosworth. Laura, let's talk about what happened on Sunday because uh, the march against anti-Semitism was very well attended, very well received, um, and the only two arrests were from people who weren't actually really on the march at all. Yeah, it was, it was huge. I mean, it's very difficult to judge when yeah. you're there how many people are there, but it felt very big. That's and, easy. Um, I can I... help you with that. If you're Black Lives Matter, it's at least a million. <laughs> uh, if you're uh, with the uh, Let's Rejoin, uh, the European Union, it's two million. Um, and if you're anybody else, it's only about 10,000. If you're, if you're a lockdown protester, it's 500 anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Um, I spoke to a police officer on the day who told me he thought it was 120,000. The organisers on stage said 105,000. So they must have done the... Oh, hello. There I am. That's, um, that's my Israeli brother-in-law, actually. So he came along. There was... There was um, well, there were 105,000 people there, but loads of us there from the October Declaration Gang, Alison Pierce yeah. and Toby Young and others. Loads of celebs, you know, Jewish and non-Jewish. It was one of the most good-natured, peaceful protests I've ever been on. Elliot just said it's his first ever protest yeah. and said, boy, you have not seen a normal protest then. Yeah. But what was really um, lovely about it was that people didn't come out with any particular poli political mission. Right. This was very much just against anti-Semitism. Yeah. And I want to say why that is so needed. Yeah. We can go back to your third caller yeah. just before you introduced us as the panel mm. for why it's so needed. So this is somebody who gave us some kind of geopolitical background to boundary drawing in yeah. Israel. And he thinks he's sounding very rational, very sensible, very politically informed. And then he said, Israel is a cancer. Yeah. Now, that is exactly the kind of anti-Semitism that has been mm. rising yeah. since October the 7th and all these pro-Palestinian marches. And still marches. is rising. So people think they're saying something that's rational or critiquing the Israeli government, but actually there's this kind of underlying, deeply unpleasant Jew hatred. And it doesn't take much for it to bubble to the surface. I think it'd be fair to say that some is imported from people that just don't like Jews, but there's a homegrown problem. Yeah. And... You know, it's said that at different, different times of political unrest, the way Jewish people are treated is something of a barometer for the state of your society. And that's why this march was so important. Anti-Semitism has increased a thousand percent, over a thousand percent, since the 7th mm. of October. So it was a fantastic day. Yeah. And um, great to see the British public do what they do best. Well, I must be admit, I said this... and liberal and tolerant and yeah. welcoming. I said this earlier. It was a much more kind of, you know, to me, representation of... of, of... Britain and the way that Britain is than some of the other marches that we've seen uh, on, on successive Saturdays. But there was occasionally the odd fly in the ointment. Let's have a look at uh, this character who turned up on a, I think it was a Thames Link train, uh, to basically lecture everybody about Israel. You're an Israel supporter, Aki. Yes, sir. Broski. Wallahi, on the Holy Quran, I would actually smack you across your head. Bro, don't, don't be aggressive. My bro, listen, you're aggressive. a bunch of Israel supporters, all of you. Okay. And I'll say it to all of your cameras. Yeah. I'm sorry, there are a bunch of killers right and a bunch of child molesters. You get it? All of you. Take all of you, bro. And I mean, you'd have to say, Ella, that you make characters like that on the train all the time. So he so happens to be mouthing off about anti-Semitism, which is a terrible thing that he's doing. 